Hi there, everyone. I'm Jane from Surface Anthology and Chalk Mercantile. Welcome to the Lamp Shade Makeover Workshop. So this is the finished lamp shade. Very anthropology, right? And this was this is a cloth lamp shade with a plastic liner. It's vintage. And I show you guys how to silver leaf the inside. So you'll be learning in this um, tutorial how to use silver leaf, how to paint the lampshade, how to use a paint inlay on the lampshade. And the inlays are from Iron Orchid Design. So be sure to watch the whole thing. Any questions, please ask. There we go, Jane, there's the lampshade. Please ask in the comments and enjoy. I'll see you for the first lesson. Hey there, everybody, it's Jane. Here is the lampshade that I'm going to be making over in this um, workshop. It's this wonderful, I guess we could call it a quadrifoil, right? It's got the four shapes here right? It's in four sections. It's in really, really good shape. And buying a lampshade in this shape would be, as you know, very expensive. It's covered in cloth. It has a plastic lining. Each corner is metal, right? Each one of these little indents, top is metal, bottom is metal. And what I did to clean it is I vacuumed it with my brush attachment and then I grabbed some tape and I went over it to remove any dust, anything like that. Be very, very careful because so much of this, like these bands, this whole lampshade is glued and I don't want to lift these pieces off because then I am creating more work for myself because I have to re-glue them. The really dirty part was down here, this little rim, and that's where I really took time to kind of brush it out, use the tape very, very delicately because, I, again, I don't want to, um, you know, pull stuff up that's glued. And that has given me this nice, clean shape uh, clean lampshade ready to go. So, um, and the other thing is you have to clean this plastic on the inside. And I actually just used a paper towel um, with a little bit, I wet the paper towel and put a little bit of um, Windex on it and, and did that. So it's nice and clean and ready to go. Um, when you're looking for lampshades, it's a great place um, some great places are Goodwill, thrift stores, um, tag sales. I've bought lamps just for the lamp shade, let me tell you, because shades are so, so expensive. Um, and these older ones, just, you can get something so cool, you know? Um, and for this project, look for one that has a smooth, Right, a smooth surface, not pleated, nothing like that. Something that's very, very smooth um, that we can paint. So that is it. Go out and find yourself a beautiful lampshade. Again, tag sales, thrift stores, Goodwill, anything like that. And get it nice and clean, and I'll meet you back here for the next lesson. All right, I am going to show you how I mix the color that I want to use. I'm using um, DIY paint. I have white swan here, and then I have a little bit of my beadboard color left. And as you can see, this is more of a really pale blue, and this is a very creamy, warm white. Both beautiful colors, but I want something in between. So I'm gonna be adding the white swan to the container of beadboard. I'm doing this because there's just a little bit left and I'm sure I'm gonna go through all of that when I um, finish this lampshade. So I kind of just take my tongue depressor. 
I'm not pouring it in because there's a little bit of rust because I didn't transfer my paint and I don't want to get rust into my paint. So I'm just kind of lifting it over. I'm going to make a little bit more than I want. I use this color combination all the time. So if there's anything left over, I know that I'll be using it on something else. When you're doing a paint inlay like we're going to be doing on this lampshade, the best result for beginners is using a chalk or clay-based paint, which is what this is. Okay, so put the cover back on the white swan, and then I'm just going to mix this up. Make sure you mix very, very well, you, unless you want like a, you know, a marbled effect. And that looks good. So I've got a cooler white now, which is exactly what I want. And then what I'm gonna be using, after I wipe my hands here, I'm just using a little one inch. This is a synthetic bristle brush by Authentico. Um, I want it to be smooth, you know, relatively smooth. So I'm not gonna use like this natural bristle brush. That creates texture. So, let me move this out of the way. Let's grab our lamp shade. And what I've done here is taped um, along you know the end of the metal little spokes here so I don't get paint on them and I just grabbed I'll sh show you how I did it make sure you keep your frog tape in the plastic container because if you just have it laying around all this edge is gonna, gonna collect dust and hair and whatever's laying around and then you're not going to get that nice clean edge that we all want when we use tape. So I just take a little piece of tape and tape it on and it's good to go. And then let's do a panel together. Um, let's see if I can move my camera out. Yes. All right, so here's our lampshade. I'm gonna stand up to do this. This is a pretty big lampshade. So I'm just gonna dip, and now I'm dipping into the container of paint. My brush, I wet it beforehand and wrung it out so I don't get, it discourages paint from going up into the ferrule. Um, and then I, I'm gonna just dip it in, and I'm using the contain, container, as I said, because I'm going to probably go through all this paint and um, otherwise what I'm trying to say is do not work out of a container of paint because you're going to introduce all kinds of stuff into that paint and you can contaminate it, it can go bad, especially a paint like this. That's all natural and we don't want that. Background music is provided by my two dogs, <laughs> Willow and Henry. All right, this is, it, it's really, really easy. Which is really nice. So we want to get one coat under our belts. Don't press down on your lampshade because we don't want to dent it. And I'm going along that little top part. Okay. 
And if your paint is too thick, you can either use a misting bottle and mist your project, or just add a little bit of water to your paint. Sometimes we have paint that's been around for a little while and it gets thicker as the water in it evaporates. All right, so this was one section. I wanted to show you how it's done. It's got, you can tell it's gonna go really fast. Um, and I really, I actually really love painting this lampshade. So there is one section painted. Make sure you get this little top ridge going around. I'm not gonna paint the inside because we're gonna be leafing it, but just get that painted. Anything that's not gonna be leafed, which is this top part. And then the same thing for this bottom part. Because boy, when you look at um, a lampshade that's old like this and it's really yellowed and you paint it with a cool color, oh, you don't wanna see that yellowed, icky, color. All right. Um, so I am going to finish the whole lampshade. Now you saw that I painted the top, right, and the bottom. If you can, if you do that, you can't rest it down unless you put it on a piece of wax paper or you put it on top of a lamp, right? Because we don't want to put down a wet painted fabric down and have it stick. So be mindful of that so you don't get into any trouble with that. I'm gonna finish painting this and I'll be back here for the next lesson. All right, let's look at these sheets. These are the IOD paint inlay sheets, okay? This is the grid side. This should always be facing you when you're applying it down, right, when you're applying your paint inlay. The other thing you're gonna notice is there's a margin all the way around each one of the sheets. This needs to be completely cut off before you start. And you need that so you can place your design that, I'll show you, Get another sheet and show you how it meets up. All right, where's Mr. Cow? Here he is. So here's the cow, and again, when you're using this, it's going to be the opposite way. Right, the cow's gonna be facing the other way. But you see how there's this big margin here, and we really need for these to meet, for this to meet this. So this has to be cut away or you won't be able to place your design well. So all you do is grab your scissors, your paper scissors, and just cut it away. I have forgotten to do this a couple of times and you learn really quickly. You get quite a lesson. So, and that's it. So you see, I cut that away. So off camera, I'm gonna cut away all of the margins. Whenever I open up a book now, a new inlay, that's what I do. I just cut away the margins and then I put it away, so even if I'm not using it then, it's gonna be ready to go and I don't have to worry about it. All right, so I'm gonna do this and then I'll be back here for the next lesson. All right, welcome back. So here's my lampshade. There are four, one, two, three, 
four sections that I'm doing, right? So I have four sheets that I've lined up. One, two, three, and four, which is sort of off camera. And these are gonna wrap around my lampshade. Now what I'm gonna do, because I, am, I know that these can get out of order, is I'm gonna grab my lampshade and I'm going to label one, two, three, four. And I'm gonna do the same thing, oops, if my lampshade survives. I'm going to label these one, two, three, and four. And this is a friction pen. It, it erases with heat. I use it for everything. I love them. So now, right, this is the side that's going to be going down. So I really need to turn these over. There's one. There's two, three, and four. Now, if you're working with an abstract design and you have, you know, your lampshade and you're putting on uh, inlay flowers and they're going to be random, you don't need to do this. I have this continuous design and that's what has to happen. Now, with these, Remember, I'm always going to remind you, grid side up, painted side down into the paint. So what I'm going to be doing is each one of these sections, and these, these fit pretty darn well into each one of these sections. I might have some gaps. Um, I'm gonna do my best to kind of line them up. And maybe my absolute last one, I'll show you as I go along how I'm gonna do that. Um, but, but that is it. And the other thing I have to think about is the height, right? Do I wanna have all the bottom design down? Right, that lines up with the bottom, or do I want it from the top down, which would be a lighter color? That's something you have to think about and really, you know, sit and look at it um, until you know, and then you're gonna diagram that out. Like, you know, make notes. I'm using from top down for this whole thing, right? Or I'm using from bottom up. So. That is what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna make a decision, make my notes, and then I'll be back for the next lesson. I also wanted to let you guys know I did paint the inside with the DIY paint because it looked so yellow and gross <laughs> compared to this nice fresh coat of paint. I just had to do it. So that is all painted all. So I didn't do two coats, just one, because um, we're gonna be leafing the inside. All right, I will see you back here for the next lesson. All right, welcome back. Time to put our inlay on. I've got my paint. I've got my little one inch brush that I've wet and I'm going to quickly put a coat of paint on this section where my first inlay is gonna go. And be generous. I'm doing the inlay from top to bottom. And I'm starting where the seam is, the back of the lamp shade. So um, if I get to the end and they don't match up, it's the back. So I won't be too, I won't be too <laughs> destroyed. All right, I'm just brushing it on. Good coat.
All right. Then I'm going to take my inlay and I'm going to mist very lightly. This is a trick I learned from my friend Joni of Weathered Wings. I'm going to mist the side that I'm laying down, if you could see that off camera. So I'm just giving it a light mist to get, get it started. And then you gotta line it up, and I'm going from the top is matching the top of the shade. Like that. And it's not the easiest doing this on camera for sure. Then you want to smooth it out into the paint. And I've got a nice big gap. Oh boy. So that is going to be a little bit of an issue. We'll figure it out. But really what I have to do now is press this whole inlay into the paint, into that wet paint. And I'm committed now, I cannot reposition this. You only have like a second to do that. And then what I'm gonna do, you see me kind of smoothing this with my fingers, I cannot use my brayer at this point because I'll dent my lampshade. I'm gonna take my sprayer, my mister again, and I'm gonna mist this down. And then I'm just gonna keep pressing this in. This little area here, it seems to be going down, but I missed a little bit of paint in there. So I'm gonna grab my brush and blob on some paint right in that spot. Right. And then I'm going to take my cloth, this cotton cloth that I've also wet with my sprayer, my mister, and I'm just going to press, I'm, I've got my hand underneath to support, and I'm just going to press the design in. all over. All right, looks good. Now, I'm going to let this dry for about an hour and then I will pull it off and we're gonna see how this first section went. So if we need to correct along the way, like I already know, rolling this out, the Im, you know, the image, the sheet, the carrier paper kind of shrinks. So my design's going to be short, right, on this side. So I have to make up for that, but we'll figure something out. So I will meet you back here in about an hour. All right, welcome back. So here is our section. It is dry to the touch. And um, now we're gonna remove the inlay, the moment of truth, and see if this worked. So I've got my misting bottle and I've got my damp cotton cloth. So I'm going to mist. All of it. And yes, I am doing one section at a time. Okay, and then I'm just gonna grab my cotton cloth and I'm gonna press 
the water into the carrier paper. You have to wait about 30 seconds just to help remove that. And you, you have to be careful because it's a lampshade. It's not a piece of wood. Okay. Now I'm just going to grab one corner. And then I'm going to pull that away. And there's our image. Save your transfer, um, your, sorry, paint inlay, because we're gonna use it again. You can use these again. So there's my image. Now, the first thing I'm noticing are these wrinkles, right? But it still looks pretty good. I'm, I'm really loving this look. So I am gonna continue now with sheet number two. I put a little piece of tape with the number two, and I'm gonna line it up right here, not inside the seam, but right along the design and do the same thing. And I will meet you back here when I've done this to the whole um, piece and it's ready for the next step. I will see you guys then. Okay, I'm gonna show you where I'm at with our lampshade. I have got, as you can see here, I've silver leafed the inside of three of the sections and I was going to show you how to do this one on camera but I'm having a heck of a time getting my camera in there so I'm going to show you how to um, leaf on a piece of flat board because it's all it's all the same technique but look at the outside it is so cool and I love it it just you know, with that inside um, some light in there with that beautiful silver. And for areas that I felt like, you know, my inlay didn't make enough of a connection with that base paint, I just took my brush with some dark gray and filled in the leaves and it was kind of fun. Um, but I love, I just love how this came out um, with the, oh, now I forgot the name of the inlay. Maybe, I think it's called Summer Chateau, something like that. But I'll have that in the, in the supply list. But isn't that beautiful? It's very anthropology. And let me tell you, <clears throat> their lampshades are not inexpensive. So this is a great way to get a beautiful high-end look. For not all that money. All right, I will be back to show you um, how to leaf so that you can line your uh, lampshade with, with either gold or silver or copper or one of the many, many um, different kinds of leafs you can use. I'll see you then. Okay, let's do some leafing. So what I'm gonna be using is something called Gilding Size. This is the glue that you use for leafing. And I just have a little container where I poured some out. I've got just a piece of board here. And then I have my book, and I've already been using this. Um, of silver leaf and it comes like this in these books and mine has a little bit of a sticky edge so you want to keep your hands super clean but there is a sheet of silver so the very first thing we're going to do I'm going to first I'm going to close this up so I don't blow that all over is I'm going to use a um, brush and I'm going to brush on the size And I'm just gonna do an even coat. Now this is mostly raw wood. And I normally actually don't um, gild raw wood. It usually has paint or some kind of varnish on it or wax. 
Actually, you don't want to gild over wax. It won't work. Okay, so I'm going to move this away, put my brush into some water, and I'm just going to push this a little bit. I'm going to use my blow dryer. Um, either you could let this dry naturally, which will take anywhere from five to 10 minutes, or you can push it along using a blow dryer. Our goal is to get it so that it feels tacky, and that's what we mean when we say when your glue, your size comes to tack. So now if I touch it, it will come off on my finger, but when it's to tack, it'll feel sticky, but it won't come off on my finger and it will no longer be milky. Okay, so there it is. It's really, really fast. So I'm going to open. Now this is where if you feel anything sticky on your hands, don't be like me. Clean them off. Go run to the sink and wash them off because any size that's on your fingers, even the smallest amount, is going to pick up your silver leaf and not put it on your piece. It's going to stick to your hands and make you really frustrated. So you open your book to a piece and then I just turn it over like this and lay that down. Find another piece. I give that a little pull. And now I can take some of the scraps, right, the extra here, and lay that down. And this is if you're not doing it in a laid out pattern. If you are, you wouldn't do this. You would just keep laying out your sheets and either a brick or you know a subway tile pattern okay so there it is and then I take a very clean um, brush and I just pounce it down so it, I know it's going into that size okay that looks good and then you just brush away the excess. They make special brushes for this that won't scratch. This natural bristle brush does give it a little bit of a satin look, which I'm going for. You can also get cotton gloves and rub away um, any excess if you want. And there it is. It's that easy, you guys. And if you miss any places, like I did right there, right? All I would need to do is put a little bit more size on, wait for it to come to tack, and I could even take a scrap, right, one of the little pieces, and put that down over that area and cover it up. So that is how easy it is to leaf, and there's no other way to create that kind of metallic look um, other than gilding like this with gold, silver, copper. There's all different colors of leaf. There you go. Thank you so much for watching the tutorial, How to Make Over a Lampshade. These techniques can be applied to any shape lampshade at all. I was lucky when I found this four section vintage, there we go, lampshade. Um, it was just begging for a makeover because it was such an unusual shape. But you could do this with any shaped lampshade. 
and you can use um, any one of the Iron Orchid paint inlays. Head over to chalkmercantile.com and you'll see all of them. And of course, you can use any kind of leaf that you want. I use silver, you can use gold, copper. There's just many, many different types of leaf. The last thing I wanted to leave you with is finishing the lampshade. I am not going to finish mine because they don't really get touched a lot, but you can finish your lampshade with clear wax. And you just apply it with a brush, a nice veil of clear wax, let it dry, and Bob's your uncle, you're all set. Be sure to follow all my socials, and if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to my channel and click that little notification bell so you'll know when I have a new tutorial. Thank you so much again for watching. Happy creating, everybody.